Bienvenue à tous. Welcome to Reporters, France 24's Eye on the Big Story Worldwide. In this edition, we look at the use of drones, one of the most controversial weapons in current day conflict. Drones play an increasingly important role in all scenarios of combat, as well as having a use in civilian situations such as search and rescue. But it's a use of drones as an automatic, almost insidious and often deadly weapon that causes most discomfort among politicians and those potentially under fire alike. Our reporters have been to meet the people who pilot the drones to see how they work and especially how they train and hear how they feel about what they do. For the Crowther, uh, his report starts in the American state of New Mexico. In the New Mexico desert, a whirring sound, like that of a lawnmower. It's what we came here looking for. That black dot in the sky is a predator drone with its tail pointing downward. Then another one, the same sound, this time a reaper drone. The predator's big brother is more powerful and more lethal. Both took off from Holloman Air Force Base. Over 2,000 people live at Holloman, home to the world's biggest flying school for military drones. For his and his family's safety, the officer who will show us around has been told to hide his last name. A drone pilot, after all, is a target. Like many on base, Major Matt spent years as a fighter pilot before taking his place in a predator cockpit on the ground. Now he teaches the new generation. In this school, they teach you how to go to war without ever setting foot in enemy territory. With the remotely piloted aircraft, we are in the United States flying aircraft that are on the other side of the world. Um, so we do go home at the end of every day, um, which is different. Uh, but. It's, a, it's an amazing capability and it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of support for the ground guys out there and they request it because they know that we do a great job and we're happy to do it. A Predator drone can stay in the air for 24 hours. Pilots therefore take turns inside these containers, the cockpits from which they fly the drones. Go. The intelligence analysts sit here on the left, behind the men who control the aircraft. There is no daylight, no distractions. These men control a machine that is worth millions of dollars, often with heavy weapons on board. Zero at 25. Next to the pilot sits the sensor operator. Copy. He steers the cameras and the radars. The pilot on the left controls the actual drone. So I'm going to start turning the aircraft in that direction if you can get the sensor ball over there. And yeah, I'm going to get the camera on target. For that location. You can see the other things that a pilot would normally be concerned with. How is my engine doing? Uh, what's my altitude? What is my attitude? Am I pitching up, pitching down, turning left or right, and how fast am I going? Basic question, what is the red button here? Uh, this red button? Uh, this actually doesn't do anything for me. It's non-functional for me. When in combat, the red button controls the missiles. But Officer Matt says he has only ever flown reconnaissance missions. Officially, only 3% of drone flights by the US Air Force are combat operations. But both the Reaper and the Predator come fully equipped just in case. This is your AGM-114 missile. It's a Hellfire, the same missile that's uh, used on our Apache helicopters. It's used for anti-armor, anti-personnel, and we have a variant for uh, buildings as well. The names given to these drones are no coincidence. They hunt and they kill. A Predator can carry 350 kilos worth of weapons, the Reaper over a ton. Traditionally, the names of crew members are emblazoned on all aircraft, but like the officers' name tags, their identities will remain hidden. Very visible, though, is the technology on board. Uh, up front here, to start off with, we have the two cameras uh, that are used for launch and recovery. Um, 
We also have our uh, angle of attack indicator, just like every other aircraft. Um, moving back underneath, we have our multi-spectral targeting system. It allows us to see the ground, so it's a bunch of different cameras that can zoom in uh, pretty far. We also have our lasers here so that we can um, use the lasers to mark our targets for the weapons that we would employ in certain circumstances. The cameras, they see it all from an altitude of several kilometers. Maps and images are dissected inside the cockpit by analysts looking for enemies, weapons, suspect movements, potential targets. In this simulator, pilots in training are given lifelike situations to deal with. Today, this is a simulation that's being run right now for training over Kabul and Afghanistan. Um, so we can mark different things like potentially where the bad guys are, uh, where the good guys are. There's an unmistakable target. Someone forgot to delete this comment before our camera captures it. Blow this up, it says. Go off base and that is precisely the type of humor that is not appreciated. Oftentimes, when the opportunity to launch a Hellfire missile comes, the intended target is with somebody else. Very rarely is it ever that person singled out of a crowd. That is the voice of a former member of the U.S. drone program, an intelligence analyst. Daniel Hale was deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan. We meet him in Washington, set to tell his tale at an anti-drone event organized by Code Pink. Daniel Hale is nervous. Among the other guests here are family members of people killed by American drone strikes. And, and targeting of people, I just would like to, uh, in a way, say I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not up here for any good reasons. The, the, the thing that was probably m most difficult dealing with was the sense that, that you really don't feel much at the end of the day. Not in a numbing sense, but in the sense that you're just going about business as usual, and uh, and there is no there is no intimate connection to what's happening in reality. There is no, you know, looking the person in the eyes when it happens. He would just, we tried to contact Daniel you know, Hale again, but since this interview, because... he no longer wants to talk to any media. Too sensitive a subject matter, say those who advise him. The constructors don't want to hear these critical voices. General Atomics, the company that builds the Predator and Reaper, has just announced its newest arrival, the Avenger. This one is being promoted as a fighter jet without a pilot. General Atomics promises savings galore on military budgets. In transformational technologies, where affordable numbers... Yeah. General Atomics has its stand every year at the AUVSI convention, the drone show. The latest showcase was held in Washington, not all too far from the Pentagon. Unmanned vehicles come in all shapes and sizes, some for civilian, some for military use. Officers and members of the industry come to see the latest trends. We recognize some drone pilots from the U.S. Air Force. Otherwise, it's a professional convention like any other. If it wasn't for what is on display, missiles for one. More drones in the skies means new markets are opening up. This is a Viper Strike. We refer to it as Viper-E. This is a glided munition that comes off of both manned and unmanned platforms. This backpack is what holds the Raven, so that's how the Raven is carried. When the backpack opens up, all the pieces of the Raven are contained within that. You pull them out of the backpack and assemble it. It takes about five minutes. The hand launch would just come across like this and be up in the air. Everything's that way, and then when you, it's finally to come... The future of war is on display. This small drone gives a soldier the means to see what might be happening the other side of a building or a mountain with the help of remote controls. The new technologies are backed by the people promoting the use of RPAs, as the US military calls them, remotely piloted aircraft. Army General James Barkley advocates the wider use of drones by the Pentagon. You know, if you look at uh, 
the past 10 or 12 years in the war fight we've been in, uh, unmanned systems, both air and ground, have really uh, come to life. The blood of thousands is on your head! Shame on you! And shame on our country for breaching international law! You're killing children! The blood of thousands is on your head! Companies like Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, General Atomics, and Raytheon, and all of those companies make a ton of money off of the blood of children and countries that never attacked us. We need to ground the killer drones. It's time to stop the killer drones! Drones do have their critics in the United States, but Code Pink is one of the few loud voices of opposition. Stop the killer drones! Stop the killer drones! The blood is on your hands! The blood is on your hands! We understand that there are some good uses for drones, but we really want to raise awareness uh, across the entire United States about the way that drones are being used in countries that we're not even at war with, like Yemen and Pakistan. Children die. Children die. The sounds of protest don't reach Holloman Air Force Base. The wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have shown the practical use for drones in combat in the eyes of the Pentagon. The US Air Force no longer trains only its own pilots. Other countries need drone pilots too. These officers are French. Paris has bought two American-made Reaper drones. They won't be armed and will be used for reconnaissance only, says the French Air Force. The first French drone pilots received their training in the desert of New Mexico. At the end of our training here, we can use this kind of weapon system in an actual operational environment. In fact, we're expected very soon in the places where this drone will be used. We're leaving for Africa soon. Lieutenant Colonel Tongi Benzaken used to fly the French Mirage jet. Like him, all six of the French pilots in training are swapping a cockpit in the air for a cockpit on the ground. As night falls, the Predators and Reapers return to base, pilotless, on their own. In the year 2014, 700 pilots will learn their new trade on this base. Other countries like France may follow suit. The US military now trains more drone pilots than fighter jet pilots. Well, Philip Crowther joins us now down the line from Washington. Philip, thank you very much for your report. You had access to the drone program of the American Air Force, but one gets the feeling that's kind of just scratching the surface. There's so much more to it than meets the eye. You're absolutely right. There is so much more. Just take a look at the recent lethal U.S. drone strikes in Yemen that got a lot of uh, coverage on the ground. Those uh, were not by the U.S. Air Force. Indeed, they were not by the U.S. Army either, and they were not by the U.S. Navy either, meaning the U.S. military was not involved. This was the CIA, uh, which is uh, responsible for most of the U.S. drone strikes. The CIA doesn't have to be open about them. It doesn't have that need for transparency. And indeed, the U.S. government does not have to acknowledge CIA drone strikes in the likes of Yemen and Pakistan. Those are two countries, for example, that the United States is not at war with, meaning that it is only the CIA and not the U.S. military that can conduct those drone strikes. What we're seeing right now here from this Obama White House, from this administration, is a will to move on from a drone program within the CIA to a drone program within the Pentagon, within the U.S. military. That would mean more transparency and it would mean that any figures that might be available would probably have to be published right now. They are not public, but there are organizations that have figures. The New America Foundation here in Washington, for example, has figures as to the CIA drone strikes since they began in 2004. In Pakistan, 370, they say. In Yemen, over 100. And the victims, of course, as well. 4,500 killed, according to the New America Foundation. It says up to 10% of those were civilians. Hence the controversy of the U.S. drone program. Philip, those are chilling statistics, any way you look at it. Um, you gave us an exclusive look, too, at the French pilots uh, on base learning their trade. Is France now getting in uh, on the act? 
Yes, and France is not the only country that is getting in on the act. Uh, France was almost forced to do so because of uh, the military operation in Mali that began in January 2013. Uh, France noticed that it didn't have the surveillance means that it needed to be able to carry out uh, that military operation as it wanted. It had drones, Harfang drones made by EADS, uh, but it had to... Uh, call the Americans in, basically, to use its Predator and Reaper drones for surveillance purposes. France was so happy with what they did uh, that they have now bought their own. One can only imagine, Philip, the, the way warfare is going to look in years to come. A sort of uh, brave, though somewhat scary new world in which drones are everywhere. Well, it looks increasingly uh, likely, and the drones are getting better. That's at least what the defense industry would say. More stealth drones are being built right now, meaning they, meaning they are more difficult to detect by radar. The U.S. Navy also is very proud to show off its drones that can land and take off from an aircraft carrier. Uh, these are some of the technolo technological uh, innovations. The United Kingdom recently presented its supersonic stealth drone called the uh, Terranus, uh, that is the name for the Celtic god of thunder. The names uh, don't hide uh, very well what these drones might be used for at some point. What we're seeing here in the United States is uh, all arms of the U.S. military want and need new drones for possibly bigger drone programs in the future. And then you have uh, all sorts of companies who are capable of building these drones and want to get the big contracts. Take a look at these names. You probably have heard of them. Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, General Atomics and Boeing, all of them vying for uh, the big contracts. It's almost an arms race that is going on within the United States and, of course, beyond the United States as well. Uh, because there are other countries like France that need to buy drones, that want to buy drones, and eventually might want to build their own. Philip Crowther in Washington, as ever, thank you very much indeed. That concludes uh, this programme. To see it again, of course, go to our website, francefancat.com. This is Reporters. You're watching France Fancat. Stay with us.